What's up, guys? How are you? Happy Tuesday. Welcome in to another episode of the Daily Juice Podcast. I'm your host for this daily 365 adventure we call the Daily Juice. My name is Matt Peralt. You guys can follow me across all socials at Sports Talk Matt. After a slightly losing day, we go up three to two on the record, but down on the juice because of the under that unfortunately did not hit for us. It was a bad beat if you actually had bet that opener number at 45 and a half, a last second touchdown there by the Jets. Tyrod Taylor gets it in and that kind of screwed that. So every single number missed if you bet under, over, every single number hit if you bet over. Win there for the 49ers. I told myself I was not going to bet totals in week one. But because of the primetime under thing, I was like, all right, in the Jets defense, I believed in the Jets defense. Yuck. They got dominated by not Christian McCaffrey, by a backup running back who found out on Friday he was going to play. Hmm. Injury report, huh? Brees Hall touchdown. Good. Brock Purdy over six time yards rushing. Good. Aaron Rodgers under 235 and a half yard passing. Good. Debo almost got there. Debo ended up with five receiving receiving uh, receptions on the night last night. So we almost got over on that. That was kind of a bummer. And you guys had a lot to say about that and, you know, missing. I did misspeak about Brandon Ayuk and Brent and, and Debo Samuel. I still like the bet, even though it was told in the wrong way last night. I still liked the bet on that. Debo had eight carries. Debo had five receptions. We just missed that by one. He wound up in the, you know, it's prop betting normally, right? It's a, it's one either side. He gets up with five. So we missed on the under over comes in there. So three and two, but down uh, 0.55 units on the day for us here on a Tuesday or Monday going into a Tuesday. The Daily Juice is being presented by DraftKings. Dr- download the new DraftKings Pick 6 app now and use the code JUICE. That's JUICE for the code for the new Pick 6 customers and play $5 to get $50 in Pick 6 credits guaranteed. Plus, they're going to give you NFL Plus with Red Zone and NFL Network only on DraftKings Pick 6. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org in Connecticut. Must be 18 plus. Age and eligibility restrictions may vary by jurisdiction. Pick 6, not available everywhere, including New York and Ontario. Void where prohibited. See terms at pick6.draftkings.com slash promos. One per new customer. Reward issued as $50 in non-withdrawable pick six credits that expire in six months. NFL Plus Premium offer available to and only to new and former NFL Plus subscribers. Additional NFL Plus Premium terms at nfl.com slash terms. Okay, I've got my first bet for week three in college football. It's a Friday night play. And I've got two WNBA plays that I want to get into with us here on today. Let's start with Connecticut and the LA Sparks. The number is nine and a half. Here we are again with the Sparks at home as big dogs. This is really interesting when we start looking at them as big dogs, what the what the Sparks have done this year. I mean, look, they didn't cover the last time they played against Connecticut. The game was on the 8th of September. Okay, so it was a little little while ago when L.A. played. And they lost the game 79-67. to They were 11-point dogs in that game. We're running it back here again, and it's 9.5. But before that, they were catching 11 against Indiana. They were catching 12.5 against New York. They were catching 13.5 to Connecticut on the road, 16 and a half against Vegas on the road. We've been on the LA Sparks. When I get this type of number, look, they're not outstanding ATS. They're 11, 12, and 1 this season, but Connecticut is 10 and 14 ATS, and they're good on the road, but they're not tremendous on the road. This number at nine and a half, it, it's just too heavy for me. I, I just I, I look at it every time and I'm like, if you're gonna give me nearly double digit points with the LA Sparks. They just cover. I mean, they're just as big dogs. They have a problem when they are small dogs are favored. They're that's when they have problems. But like, you know, four and a half, four and a half, 
Now, against Chicago, they were four and a half point dogs, didn't cover. Against Atlanta, they were four and a half point dogs, didn't cover. Against Washington, they were four, five and a half point dogs, didn't cover. Against Chicago, they were two and a half point dogs, they didn't cover. They're six and 18. They're not a good basketball team except against big numbers. Give me the LA Sparks plus nine and a half. LA Sparks at home plus nine and a half against Connecticut. By the way, tell me in the comment section. Do you want the slide at the end, or do you want the slide as I go? I've been doing it a little bit as I go, and people have been commenting saying you're cheating, and you just watch the first, you get the you get the first slide, and you stop watching. That's not the point of this video, okay? I know you guys with audio, it doesn't matter to you guys, but watching the video on YouTube, on the Betting Pros YouTube channel, the idea is to get you guys to watch this video to the end. So if you don't do that, so tonight I'm not going to show you the slide till the end give you a feel. Last night was different than tonight. So I'm going to give you two different options. You can watch last night's video again if you want to get a feel for what I'm talking about, but I'm going to give you the full slide at the end after I break everything down. Bet number two in the W for tonight. We're talking Minnesota in Atlanta. Minnesota, five and a half point road dogs. 15, 10 and one against the number this year, Minnesota. They've been a favorite of ours. 11, 12, and 1 for Minnesota, sorry, for Atlanta ATS. They're 7 and 17. Over the last 10 meetings, Sparks, sorry, the Lynx rather, are 5, 4, and 1 ATS. Last time out for uh, when they played, when Atlanta played Minnesota, this was a push. It was a seven point win, seven point line for the Lynx. Now, the Lynx have been a team that have been up and down. Okay, we backed them against Indiana as three and a half point road favorites. They won and they covered. Then they were seven and a half point favorites against Washington and they didn't cover on the hook. They won 78 71. They were right there. They won by seven. They were seven and a half point favorites. The games against Chicago and Dallas before that, they were laying 13 and seven and a half, won by five and lost the game outright to Dallas. So they're one in three ATS over their last four games. But Atlanta is a team that they've been hot. That's why this number is five and a half. This number should be higher than that, given what the Lynx have looked like this year. Eight and 18 versus seven and 17. It's only a five and a half point line. Why? They've covered three of the last four games. Has Atlanta. They've been pretty good. They're six, three and one ATS over their last 10 games. But I think we talk about head to head here this season in particular. 86 79, 68 55, 92 79, 91. Uh, yeah, those three, yeah, 91 79 in the three matchups so far this year. All three wins covering the five and a half point number for the Minnesota Lynx. They're on the road. I'm going to lay it. Minnesota minus five and a half up against Atlanta for 1.1 units. First college football bet for week number three in college football. Friday night. This game is in Kansas City at the soccer stadium that the sporting Kansas City, right, plays at the MLS. I'm not a soccer guy. This is going to be interesting. How many people are going to be at this game? Supposedly, it's going to be a rocking crowd. Kansas City people, Kansas fans showing out. But it's not in Lawrence. Okay, this is not a, a game being played on campus. This is in Kansas City. It's a Friday night. And... Ask Houston about what UNLV can do if you take them lightly. The number is seven. It's coming down. It opened up at eight and a half. I want this thing at seven or seven and a half, not six and a half. I want this thing at seven. You can sprinkle money line if you would like. These two teams met in the bowl game last year. Heck of a game. Awesome game. Kansas State has lost their offensive coordinator to Penn State. Kansas State lost their last game on the road to Illinois, 23-17. Ricky White in UNLV lit up the scoreboard. Utah Tech. Okay. But still, you score, I mean, 72 points against anybody. 72 points is 72 points. They beat Houston on the road in their first game. They came home and hung 72. Barry Odom is the highest paid coach in the Mountain West Conference. He's building something here, and he has a chance to go 2-0 and against the Big 12? Oh, my. They got a game at home against Syracuse coming up that will be huge for UNLV. Now, Boise State, everyone thought about Boise, Boise, Boise. Hmm? Really? 
Some kid in my class, I teach at UNLV in case you don't know this. Some kid in my class asked me, said, hey, if we beat Kansas, could we make the playoffs as the group of five representative? And I was like, you're insane. There's no way that's happening. One, Northern Illinois beat Notre Dame. If they run the table, Northern Illinois is getting that spot, like just like 100%. You beat a top five team on the road, you're getting that bid to the playoffs. But I just thought it was crazy to even say that because UNLV has been so bad. They got an FCS transfer quarterback who's played really well. Fifth-year kid who's been tremendous. And I really think Barry Odom's got something cooking here. I think Kansas is on upset alert, okay? I think Kansas needs to be really careful here as to what's going on. I I, I know they've got Jim Daniels, and I know they got this offense everyone raves about, but UNLV's, de- UNLV's defense has played really well. They've done really well in the transfer portal. These kids are wanting to play. The defense took a big step forward this year so far. Another big test for them, but they really held Kansas. Sorry, they really held Houston down. And Kansas better be careful. 49-36 was the score the last time these teams played in the guaranteed rate bowl. Over, not a bad idea. Over is not a bad idea, but again, UNLV's defense, UNLV might slow it down and play ball control and run the football a bit more, trying to keep KU's offense off the field because they're on the road. So I'm not as good as positive as the over, but my goodness gracious, I like UNLV. I think the Rebels can win the game outright. I mean, I'm dead serious. I think UNLV can go to Kansas and win the game outright Friday night. Plus seven, UNLV plus seven. I want seven points, not six and a half. I want seven just in case, but give me the Rebels, man. Barry Odom, this is going to be a fun game on Friday night. I cannot wait to watch this game. It's going to be awesome. UNLV plus seven for 1.1 units. All right, the plays for here on Tuesday, the 10th of September. Lynx minus five and a half on the road against Atlanta for 1.1 units. Sparks plus nine and a half. My, uh, minus 110 at home against Connecticut, 1.1 units. And UNLV plus seven on Friday night. This game is Friday night. 1.1 units, minus 110. UNLV on the road against Kansas in Big 12 action in college football on Friday. My name is Matt Peralt. Follow me across all socials at Sports Talk Matt every single morning. It is the Daily Juice Podcast presented by DraftKings.